<laughs> I don't even know where to begin to tell you like how much I love this wool. So I wanted to start a new series of videos over on YouTube um, called Farm to Fibre where I wanted to share the story really about where I'm getting my fleeces from, sort of what I'm understanding from them, what I'm learning from them um, and then ultimately I guess sort of then sharing the end result and what I'm doing with them, um, sort of once I've made yarn, sort of where am I going from there. Um, I kind of wanted to sort of highlight the um like the, the the beauty the magic of raw fleeces um like i just feel like it's such a different spinning experience when you actually start with a fleece rather than start with roving prepared tops um that's how i first learned how to spin um was with roving and i found it really really hard um, you know, I was finding that I was sort of, I was locking up and I was kind of just, I just, yeah, I found it really hard to, to draft from roving. Um, but as soon as I started playing with fleece, that's, you know, it just felt right. Um, I think it's also important as a maker to know where your raw materials come from um, and what impact that you're having on the environment. So, you know, in the last couple of months where I've kind of actually been more conscious about where I'm getting my fibre from, um, I'm making connections with farms that are actually kind of operating in a way that I believe in, sort of more kind of just generally um, in, in life and sort of, you know, yeah, <laughs> what we're doing to this world. Um, so I just think... Yeah, for me, this is this is how I want to make, you know, I want to know where everything's coming from and think about, you know, its life cycle. To illustrate what I mean about sort of the difference between working with roving, commercial roving um, and raw fleece, I just kind of wanted um, to show you this difference with, uh, this is some other fleece, this isn't um, what I was going to talk about today, um, but this is Jacob's roving. Um, so this, yeah, this is prepared tops. So this is fiber that's been, I mean, you can see it's been selected to all be about the same color. All of the fibers have then been sort of like straightened out. So they're kind of all just running together. Um, it may or may not have also had chemical treatment done to it. Um, but yeah, it sort of produces a very uniform, um, uniform piece of fibre um, and maybe that's what you want and that's fine like if that's you know if that's what you're after then like this is this is the perfect starting point um, but this doesn't get me excited what gets me excited is this this is all from the same fleece so what I was doing in the early days was you know, I think like Jacobs is an amazing example of this because it's got different colours in it. Um, Jacobs fleece is often, you know, a mixture of whites and browns, maybe greys as well. Um, almost sort of like patchwork, like a cow. Um, and, but also within that, you know, I was then amazed to sort of understand the different characteristics of the different bits of fibre. So for example, this mini skein here, um, this is, I just tried to pick out, um, sort of more kind of hair-like bits of fibre, um, to spin, to see what that made. So we've got that, and then in stark contrast, this, same fleece, but this is the kind of more, um, kind of downy, crimpy white stuff in it. Um, this this was a very early days, so it's a really inconsistent inconsistent yarn, but just to kind of show you 
how different the fibre can be. Um, and then there's, you know, some samples somewhere in the middle. Um, so this is what has gotten me so excited about working with Lise. And this is sort of, you know, where I've been spending the last six months, basically, um, is collecting different fleeces, um, sort of processing them in different ways. And yeah, just spinning them in different ways and then seeing what result I get from that. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's what started it off. Okay, so on to today's um, fibre journey. Um, so this is actually a Jacob's cross, a Jacob's mule. Um, so it's sort of, it is quite similar to the Jacob's fleeces that I've played with before. Um, but this particular fleece was all grey, um, but kind of different greys. So there's sort of some quite dark streaks, um, some much brighter streaks. Um, I haven't even got out the whole fleece um, so far. All of this experiment has literally just been grabbing the top handful out of the bag, basically. Um, so yeah, I'm quite <laughs> quite excited to then actually see what I've got left um, and whether there are any other differences in there. Um, or whether this is kind of representative of the whole fleece. So I picked up this fleece uh, a few weeks ago um, from our dairy farmer. So, yeah, <laughs> dairy farmer who keeps sheep um, as well. So we go, we get our milk direct from the farm. Um, and I just happened to see on their Instagram a post where they said, you know, we've got a bunch of fleeces. Does anybody want to, you know, to buy any? Um, they kind of just need a home, basically. So I messaged them and said, have you got any fleeces left? Thankfully they did. Um, so yeah, so the next day we went down and, oh God, <laughs> it was one of those like amazing kind of like experiences for me as sort of like a new, a new spinner, um, you know, sort of really getting to chat to the farmers was just amazing. It turns out that one of the farmers um, is a spinner himself so when we got, you know, there were basically three massive big twin bags full of fleeces. When we started to rummage in, inside them, he was able to go, you know, right, you don't want that one. That one's from an older sheep. You can see it's already been felted a little bit. Um, and we were talking about the different breeds because they've got quite a few different breeds at their farm. Um, so this is just the first breed from that farm that I picked up that day. Um, so yeah, it was just such a like, informative experience and oh god I was just like a kid in a candy store like luckily because I'd already tried you know samples of so many different fleeces already I felt like I was able to kind of like feel the raw fleece and kind of decide what I was liking and not liking um or what I was excited to you know experiment more with um, although basically I just got all the fleeces that had colour in them. <laughs> I'm just obsessed with like greys and just sort of, yeah, well, browns, blacks, anything, anything that's not white basically. Um, I think I will get more excited about the, the white and cream fleeces like in the future when like natural dyeing is going to happen soon. Um, but for now, like I'm just I'm very, very happy to just play with um, with greys. Um, so yeah, so I picked out, I think, like four, four or five fleeces. Um, and I don't know whether to tell you. No, I, yeah, I'm going to tell you how much it cost me. Cause I think this is where it's, there's just this really crazy thing happening in the wool industry. <laughs> like, and it's probably not just in Britain. Um, but these fleeces, you know, were, going to waste like they it didn't seem like they were um being rushed off their feet with demand for it um and so i picked up four fleeces for 10 pounds um i tried to give them more money um but they refused <laughs> so yeah four fleeces for 10 pounds if we compare that um i've got some herdwick roving that i think i spent 10 pounds on and that was half a kilo of roving. So I think I've probably got about 10 kilos at least for 10 pounds. That just gives you an idea about how 
affordable it is to buy raw fleece. Um, especially, I suppose, these fleeces that haven't necessarily been bred and kept for uh, for their fleeces. Because there are farms out there that, you know, sort of, I've looked and, you know, they're, spend they're, they're charging you about like 30, 40 pounds for a fleece. But that's, you know, like the quality of those fleeces is just going to be on another level. Um, one day, <laughs> one day I'll be happy to spend that much money. But for now, like, I mean, this is amazing. Um, so yeah, as I say, this is the the first fleece um, out of the four that I picked out um, that and that I've been experimenting with. So it is Jacob's Cross, Jacob's Mule. Um, they're not sure exactly what it's crossed with. Um, it's I, I found out the name of the sheep is called Star. Um, I did try and meet her and the rest of the flock, um, but as soon as we went into the field, they were just like moving away from us constantly. Um, so if I do on another visit get some pictures, then I'll I'll be sure to to link it back to this please. Um, but yeah, as I said, I just <laughs> just really like the colours, um, and also it just. You know, when I grabbed the top handful, like it just, it was, it just teased apart so nicely. Um, you know, I was thinking, I don't think I even need to card this. Like, I think this is just going to be, you know, ready to use. Um, so I did what I do with all new fleeces and just sort of grabbed a handful, maybe about 100 grams or so um, of fleece just off the top, nothing in particular. Um, washed it. Uh, so I've just taken now to washing it in very hot water. This is a trick that I learned from a uh, spinning mill. Um, the guy pointed out, you know, if you, the, the point of you of that wash, you're trying to get off all of this dirt and all of this lanolin, lanolin's an oil. Um, and so it sort of requires the hot temperature to actually take that oil layer away off the, off the fibre um, and you need to get the fibre out of that water before it cools back down again. If you let, and this is what I had been doing, I'd been washing stuff in the bath, starting with relatively warm water but I'd been scared of felting, um, put everything in and basically left it for like an hour, the water had gone cold but all of that lanolin will have resettled back onto the fibre so all of the dirt was coming off, like I could see in the water that it was very dirty um, but yeah, the lanolin was then sticking. So, I mean, it depends what you want. Maybe you want more lanolin on, on your fibre still. Um, but I find it very hard to spin. It sort of, it just means that everything's very sort of tacky, very kind of like, there's just this sort of stickiness to the fibre if there's still a lot of oils. Um, so anyway, right, so yeah. Washed a handful, hot water. I'm just using, um, Washing up liquid, it's a very, you know, it's it's an e-cover or one of those brands, you know, it's a sort of a natural um, washing up liquid, um, just the tiniest drop of that, um, do normally two washes depending on the colour of the water, um, and then maybe a rinse, depends on how much washing up liquid I'd put in, um, and then just over the summer it's been great just to be able to dry things on the washing line. Um, so then, yeah, my first play with the uh, fibre was actually, um, I went and gate crashed a spoon club gathering uh, <laughs> over in Edale, uh, took my drop spindle, they were all carving spoons by the by the river and I took a handful of fibre and my drop spindle. Um, it was a wonderfully magical experience apart from getting eaten alive by my G's. Um But I can show you... So this was my first play, <laughs> very, very small sample um, of the fibre and it sort of, it felt like people often say, you know, you sort of like, you need to like listen or read the fibre and see what it wants you to do um, and I, I'm a big, big believer of that, um, don't fight it, like obviously you can kind of aim in certain directions and sort of try and push the boundaries. I do think it it does, it, well, it's easier if you go with 
the flow, I guess, of it. Um, so yeah, so I made this little sample um, and just loved it. <laughs> um, I knew immediately when I got home that I wanted to get it, get it on the wheel um, and do some proper big samples. Um, so I ended up doing two, um, two different samples. Um, so the first one, and this isn't actually the sample because I've ended up putting that in a, in a woven thing, um, but this is what it was like. So first of all, sure enough, I didn't need to card it, which was just amazing. Um, I was able to kind of just take the clumps and kind of just like tease them apart um, like that and just try to make them like big bouncy clouds really. Um, so that was wonderful. And also makes me, it sort of, I think about it as potentially slight time saving and also a like arm energy saving. Like I, I've only got hand carders and I'm finding it quite, can be quite a workout. <laughs> um, and also therefore caps how much I can do. Um, so yeah, big win if I don't need to card it. Um, so the first sample was kind of this quite chunky but lofty um, yarn and then the next one I did yes it sort of has slightly more of the darker shades in it um, but I also tried to go sort of in my drafting I was trying to put more fibre in and more spin to sort of make a bit of a denser yarn because I wasn't quite sure this is what I was aiming for for these to begin with was just to weave with them so I wasn't sure whether I wanted something lofty or whether I wanted something denser um, to then sort of see what different fabrics that made. Um, so that's why I did a sample of both. Then I did a little coaster sample with both of these. So that's what we've got here. You can kind of see the light and the dark. Um, so I've been these were made just on a tapestry loom, which is sort of what I find quickest and easiest if I just want to do small samples, um, then I just warp up tapestry loom. Um, I am very much enjoying like very, very weft face, uh, sort of, I don't know whether you just call it weft face or whether it's tapestry weaving, but basically you can't see the warp yarn, you just packing it in like just pushing it down um and I just feel like it just shows off the texture of the yarn like that's that's the effect that's the look that I am just sort of yeah chasing <laughs> right now um but I made I made these and I just I knew that this was the direction I wanted to go in um I've got a lot that whole sort of pile there like all of that is just different um different fibers woven in different spun in different ways woven in different ways um and i sort of it's been a bit hit and miss whether i kind of get what i've got in my head um but this was very exciting because <laughs> this was like oh no this is this is the one um so of course then i had to decide which uh, sort of style of spinning I wanted to then use. Um, so in my mind I wanted, I'm, I'm aiming for a rug, um, I wanted something just really thick and just just pure comfort like I'm picturing you know in front of the fire or maybe like when you get out of bed like the first thing that you put your feet on like that's yeah though that kind of moment that like connection um, is what I was kind of trying to uh, just yeah work for um so I actually chose the loftier one um because I just really enjoyed the squidge factor like it just has this extra squidge that this one is just a little bit more solid um like it's still delicious um but yeah this this I hadn't achieved with any other samples so far because I don't think I dared myself to spin that lofty and airy. Um, so that was very exciting. <laughs> so, so from there, I decided it was time to actually make a rug. 
I've sort of spent months making tiny, tiny rugs, um, otherwise known as coasters. Um, and I just needed to make a rug. Like I had no idea what the pitfalls were gonna be, kind of, you know, how much yarn was it gonna need? I was just like, I just, just need to do it. Just need to give it a go. Um, so I did some very rough calculations. So I kind of like measured this and weighed it and then kind of went, okay, well, if this is like, I think it was about like 10 centimeters squared. So 100 square centimeters. If I want the rug to be this size and this weighed, I think it was like 10 grams, wonderfully easy numbers. Um, so if this was 10 grams and I wanted it to then be whatever big, how many grams do I need? Um, I didn't take into account the weight of the warp because I was like, life's too short. This doesn't really matter. Like if I have more yarn than I need, that's fine. Um, so I worked out that I would need around 400 grams of yarn. Um, now I've, I've only ever really spun, like spun in like 50, 100 gram um, sort of chunks before. So, so that was a bit like, ooh, okay, now we're kind of getting into proper like production spinning. Um, so on the next sunny day, um, I dove into the um, bag of yarn, about the, the bag of raw fleece. Um, I actually, I actually accidentally washed 400 grams. So I was just grabbing, <laughs> I was just grabbing enough fleece and kept just washing it to fill the washing line in the garden. And it turns out that's 400 grams worth. Um, so it was meant to be. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I so I got I got my uh, fibre washed and, and waited for it to dry um, and then went on to spinning. Um, I'm really, really bad at the actual kind of um, technical side or like the, uh, what would you call it? Like I don't measure twist angle. I don't, um, I don't have samples of my singles when I spin. So it's very kind of, I don't know, it's weird for me because I kind of, I've come from an engineering background where like I'd be obsessed with data and numbers. But when it comes to spinning and weaving, I'm much more enjoying it being a very intuitive experience and a very kind of, I don't know, I sort of, I'm letting like the muscle memory of working with the fibre be stronger, which has been fine when I just concentrate on one fibre, but like I've, I've, you know, I've tried over a dozen different fibres now and if I tried to like, yeah, recreate a yarn from a few months ago, I know I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, but I mean, right now that doesn't matter. So, um, so yeah, so I sat down to, to spin my first bit of the 400 grams. Um, that first day I span, span, is that? I'm not sure that's a thing. I spun, I spun 200 grams of yarn, um, which is the most yarn I've spun in a day. And it broke me. Um, <laughs> it turns out like that's, when your body's not used to that, that's quite a lot of spinning. Um, I think it was only maybe three, four hours tops. Um, but yeah, like I just haven't built up, like my body isn't conditioned for that those kind of movements um for that long so yeah so so 200 grams is, is quite a lot um and I also I got a bit frustrated with my spinning wheel because it's not set up like this is like this is fairly chunky yarn and really I think I need to be set up more kind of like jumbo style um to actually kind of for it to work for the plying, basically. Sorry, it's a two ply yarn. See, I don't even, yeah, <laughs> that's what you want to know, isn't it? Um, and it's, I measured it at six uh, wraps per inch and approximately 88 meters per 100 grams. So if you want some numbers, I did actually take some numbers. I just then didn't like do anything with them afterwards. So yeah, so it took me a few days to spin all of that yarn. Um, and it was just amazing, like 
just like holding that much, like that many skeins. I think it was like eight skeins or something. And like, I just kept walking around the house, just like holding them, just like. Um, I was quite pleased out of all of that yarn. There was only one skein that I think looked visibly different. Um, I think you can see it here. Um, there was one skein that ended up with more of the, more black streaks in it than just sort of everything else. Um, I don't know how well that's looking with the light. But yeah, this one was just a little bit darker. I wasn't sure if I would use it in the finished rug, um, cause I kind of, I, I really like my pieces to be, to look as natural and like organic as possible. And if I kind of then kind of put in sort of blocks of colour, then it's not really as the fleece was. Sometimes I've, I have been doing that, but for this piece, I just wanted the streaks to kind of naturally come and go. Um, so I, yeah, I was waiting to see if I needed to use all 400 grams or whether I could just leave out this uh, little skein. And I did just leave it out. Um, Okay, so in terms of weaving, um, so I'd recently bought a rigid heddle loom um, as sort of my next upgrade from having just a basic tapestry loom. Um, I knew I wanted to obviously go longer, I wanted to go wider, I wanted to go longer, um, and also I kind of wanted to have, you know, better control over the tension, over the, like, packing it down, um, and also, like, on the tapestry loom, I couldn't... I... oh god, this is where, like, the beginner is just gonna... is gonna, um, expose myself. Um, I couldn't... I couldn't, like, open my warp sheds. Um, so it was like, if I... for every pass, I was having to pick, which meant it was very slow and I was effectively just using like a big tapestry needle rather than using any kind of shuttle or shuttle stick. So that again made it very slow and meant that like I was having to cut my yarn into small sections which then means I've got more ends to then deal with afterwards. So I was ready for a rigid heddle loom. Um, I ended up buying a second hand one to try and save a bit of money and environmental kind of less impact. Um, Turns out it's a little bit of a botched DIY rigid heddle loom, I think, um, which I was suspicious of, but I thought, well, I'll give it a go. And because it is already a bit of a DIY job, if I need to improve it, I will feel less bad at kind of like hacking it apart. You know, whereas if I'd bought an Ashford, then like I wouldn't really want to start modifying it. Um, I would be like, no, just keep it as it is. Um, so yeah, so this was like the first kind of first time using it on like the full scale, the full width um, of the loom. Um, the first time that I warped it up, I, well, first of all, ran out of warp yarn, which is annoying. I wanted to kind of do it in a grey, didn't have enough grey, was impatient, looked to see what else I had and ended up using like a more of a chocolate brown, which so yeah, so the, the grey, sorry, that's, this is West Yorkshire Spinners uh, Fleece Jacobs, um, which is quite nice having the same, um, the same breed. Um, so I used the chocolate version of that from the same yarn. Um, but yeah, so then <laughs> first time I tried to properly warp it up, Turns out I was then using a different set to what I'd used for this. So I like warped it all up and was like, great, I remembered how to do it, this is fantastic. And then like did a couple of inches of weaving and was like, this doesn't look like this, like I can't. The problem was I couldn't pack it in as much as I had been doing for this. So I couldn't make it truly weft faced. It was still kind of quite, um, like you could see the warp. So. I decided, so I realised basically I 
double checked, I measured my set from the tapestry loom and went back to the rigid heddle loom and was like, oh yeah, I, I've, I've warped this up wrong. Um, so I had to, yeah, undo all the weaving, re-warp it um, and start again. So this was like, I was trying to get this done over a weekend and it was like, oh God, like just couldn't, just was being very impatient for all these setbacks. Um, but I'm very pleased to say that that was then it for issues. Um, the only thing was then a couple of other like little niggles with that particular loom. Like I can't, I couldn't actually use it like at the full width that I thought I could. Um, it sort of like, it, you, you just, fall off basically um so i need to have a play with that and I'm, maybe i'll explain that properly another time um and also just some bits about like how you how you scroll backwards and forward like it just it's quite fiddly and i'm like oh i should have just bought the nashford um but yeah i think i will modify this loom to make it better um but yeah, so I think it took about three days um, of sort of stop start uh, and you know, sort of over a weekend with other activities um, to weave the whole thing. Maybe it was like four, five hours. I've no idea. I didn't time it. I wasn't too worried about the timing for the first one because I knew there was going to be lots of issues. Um, I think next time I will be curious about the time because obviously I'd like to think about, you know, if I was to sell this rug, how much would I need to sell it for? Um, so I'll, but I'll worry about that at another stage. Um, but yeah, it just, I was just smitten with it <laughs> when it was on the loom. I just, it was everything I'd hoped for. Um, and then, yeah, it was Monday morning and I knew I was going to go back to the, um, to the dairy farm like that day. And I was like, I want to show them, like I need to show them. Um, so I was like trying to get through the last the last few rows um, and get it like, cut it off, tie some knots so that nothing was going anywhere and was like, okay, that's fine. I don't need to wash it yet. I don't need to like deal with the ends. I don't need to deal with the fringe. I was just like, I just need it, you know, safe and secure to then go and show everyone. Um, they loved it and it was like, um, such a kind of like affirming moment of kind of like I had this idea in my head about what I wanted to do with this fibre um, and then I made a thing and it was like even better than I'd imagined um, and oh, like the, the first moment that I put it on the floor and stood on it with no socks on like I was so giddy with excitement like I've never I don't think I've ever stood on anything as delightful as this rug. Um, I just, like I've stood on plenty of rugs, but not, not like woven rugs like this from such squishy yarn. So, but it also feels, um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't feel vulnerable. Like it feels robust. That's that that's the word. Um, be, I haven't she shown you have I? It's, it's here. I've been teasing you the whole time. Um, so let me get this stuff out of the way. Oh God. <laughs> just, just gonna wear it. Just gonna wear it now. Um, so this is the rug. So I'll do some cutaways. Um, but yeah, it, it's about 50 by 80 centimetres, at least that's what I was aiming for, it's not quite that. Um, but I don't know if you can kind of... Oh, we've got sunshine now. So this, I'm hoping you can kind of see what I mean about the natural colour variations. So these streaks of dark and light, like that's... Like that's what I get excited about and I think this is where like you're never gonna get this from like any other input but a raw fleece like 
you know, going back to like that roving that I showed you where it's just one colour. Or like I've got roving which maybe it's got a few colours but it's so consistent that it, you know, effectively it then just becomes a block. It's just, it's just one colour. Um, whereas this gives you streaks of colour. Yeah. Oh God. So there's all my, all my fluffy tufts to cut off. Um, I am kind of going on what I've just seen other people do. So I, I will cut those off once it's been washed and dried because I think you kind of want to let the fibres sort of settle and find themselves and then, then trim it off. Otherwise it can, I think you can trim it too short and then it might like pop back out or something something like that. Um, and I'll also deal with the fringing. So at the minute, we're oh, just quite, um, quite long tassels. So I'll just decide on a length and I think maybe do a, um, just a simple kind of twist them and knot them again. Um, just so that when these get washed, they don't kind of just go into chaos. And it sort of adds a bit more weight to the fringing when you do the twist. Um, the twist and knot kind of helps it to then just lie nicely. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think what else to to tell you about it. Um, well, I suppose the question is what is next for this fibre? Um, I'm just gonna pop that there. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> makes me too happy. Um, so yeah, I think I've still got like this much fiber. It's all, it's, there's some slight variations in terms of color. Sorry, the sun's coming through now. Um, and the slight change of weight. Um, but I have got this much uh, spun ready. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll make a pair of oversized coasters. I think that's the other kind of product that I get quite excited about just because I have a lot of tea and coffee and I just like putting a nice mug on a nice coaster. Um, so I think I'll make a pair of coasters as another example piece. Um, oh, I've knitted a sample with this yarn. Hang on, let's just deal with the light. Okay, so this is the same lofty yarn knitted. Um, so I'll just show you that. Again, like just the color, the streaks of color is just amazing. Um, I kind of just, yeah, did a little bit of stockinette and then a little bit of ribbing As you can see the reverse side. So this, again, I'm just like in love with. Um, it very much reminds me of the fabric you get when you knit with um, unspun yarn, which makes me very excited because I've banned myself from buying like Plotolopi or Nutridin because it's not British um, and I think I've only seen a British version of unspun yarn once like it's not that common um, and I I love the fabric that you get from unspun um, but yeah it's hard to source and it's hard sorry it's hard to spin um, at home like I've sort of I've had a little bit of a go but because it's so like effectively well what am I saying? It's not spun, <laughs> so you can't spin it. Um, I think the closest you would get is like I've seen if you'd have if you'd have used a drum carder, and then there's like a way of like pulling the fiber off the drum carder into roving, and you use like a little I don't know what the word is, but you have different sized orifices that you pull that fiber through. And if you used a very small orifice, I think you may be able to pull something out that then looked like this unspun stuff that 
you know, like Newton and Pluto Um But I don't have a Drunkada, um, so I can't make that. <laughs> but this is got that same loftiness. I mean, this probably is a bit denser. Um, I haven't measured, I haven't compared it to um, a gauge swatch for Plutolope. This was done on five millimetre needles and it was five millimetre needles and 10 centimetres across was 13 and a third. <laughs> Sorry, let's call it a half or just over 13 stitches per 10 centimetres. I didn't count the road gauge. Um, so that might, that might mean something if you're familiar um, with knitting with that yarn. Um, so I'm, I'm very much considering this for either like a slip over or a cardigan. I already have an unspun jumper, so I think I should probably not just make the same thing. Um, so yeah, I think, um, yeah, if I can, <laughs> if I can afford to use some of the fibre I've got left for a knitting project, that'd be amazing. Um, but I think right now I'm supposed to be prioritising woven stuff because woven stuff I can sell, knitted stuff I can't sell. Um, so yes, and I'm also considering selling the handspun yarn. Um, but I just need to figure out the economics of it, the sort of affordability of it. Um, yeah, so I've got a few things that I still want to do with this fleece. Um, but otherwise, I mean, it will basically be try this out now on another fleece. Now that I got a better idea about what the yarn specification is for the type of rug that I'm aiming for, um, I think basically I've been going too thin and too dense when I've been spinning the other fibres um, and I sort of just, yeah, I'm ending up with this fabric which is just too flimsy really for for the type of rug that I'm after. Um, so yeah, so I'm excited to have another play. As I say, it's got a couple more fleeces from that farm um, as well as, yeah, there's quite a lot of wool everywhere. <laughs> in here and in the shed um but yeah as for that rug so I'm not I'm not gonna try and sell that rug I think that that one just means way too much to me now like being the first rug and being like just that journey of kind of actually finally creating the fabric that I've had in my head for months um I just I, I want that for myself um we haven't decided where it's gonna go yet um, but I just, I want it everywhere, so I'm probably just going to have to make more of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, if if anything that you've seen today has kind of inspired you, sort of whether you think, you know, you can see this in another product in a different form, like, please reach out. Like, I'm open to commissions, which is a really scary thing to say, um, but I need to say it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you want a rug like this, like, talk to me, like, it's, it, oh, I think everybody needs a rug like this in their lives, um, but hopefully by sharing, like, my process and my journey to kind of from, from fleece to the finished product, like, hopefully that will kind of, like, inspire you and kind of give you a bit of knowledge to kind of recreate it for yourself as well, um, but yeah, reach out if you want to kind of, if you've got any questions, if you want to discuss this, um, if you've got any feedback, that'd be wonderful. Um, otherwise, yeah, I think that's it for today. Um, and let me know if you enjoy this as a concept. I've got, you know, yeah, as I say, I've got lots more fleeces from other farms as well. Um, there's some Herdwick that I've played with recently which is a very interesting journey because Herdwick fleece has got so many different parts to it um, that it was quite an education just trying to figure out which bit of the fleece did I want to spin with to create what product because it it's yeah what I've ended up with is a very wiry thing um, whereas this is super soft so 
yeah I've got lots of interesting stuff to share so let me know if you want to see more videos like this um, or anything else and uh, yeah until next time bye